everyone, welcome back and welcome to my new segment, You Asked For It. Hey everyone, welcome back to You Asked For It. And to all my subscribers, thanks for stopping by again. And if this is your first time here, thanks for checking out my channel. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. Don't forget to click the bell so you get notified when I upload new content. And today's question is from Cora B from Facebook. And as always, I gotta put my glasses on. <laughs> and Cora writes, if you run into someone on a walk and want to chat for a minute, why do dogs go up and sniff someone, act like everything is fine, and then after some time has passed, start barking at them like they're not cool anymore. Great question, Cora. Believe it or not, this problem isn't all that uncommon. I've been hearing about this for many years where people are walking, their dog is fine, and they sometimes feel that just something sets them off or that triggers them to start barking or acting a little crazy after a little bit of time has passed. Oftentimes we see it the other way around where the dog just starts barking on approach. But uh, what Cora is suggesting is a lot more common than you think. As with most of these quick segments that I have here trying to offer feedback, the biggest challenge is not knowing the dog, not knowing the handler, not actually seeing video of the dog's body language and how everything unfolds and transpires. So that is always a challenge here. And one of those challenges is not finding a root cause, which can make modification a little difficult, but not at all impossible. And again, without knowing the dog, the handler, without seeing video evidence of what exactly happened, you know, the root cause is always tricky, but that doesn't mean we can't come up with some solutions and move forward to work the dog through these issues. Many times in these situations, it could just be a matter of boredom, where the dog is walking, you're walking along, da 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 right, and you stop, say hello, and you know, whether there's an actual trigger or not, I don't know the answer to that because I'm not there and I haven't seen it, but at face value, it's fair to say it's possible that the dog got a little bored or whatever the trigger was, the dog started to target the person or the other dog or whatever the case may be when you're walking up to the passerby saying hello and chatting for a few minutes. The good news is, is that you've experienced this before. So now we know, you know what hand we're dealt and we can play it, right? <laughs> so what we need to do is condition the dog in those situations to proactively avoid these quote unquote outbursts. And let's call it for what I suspect it is, is a little boredom going on. And one solution is to fall back and rely on obedience. I mean, we, we often neglect the power of obedience. Heck, a simple sit command, and when I say a simple sit command, I mean a reliable sit where your dog will sit under any circumstances in any environment, that's our goal. That's what we want to work on. So how do we accomplish it when the triggers are presented and the dog starts to escalate? This is going to sound really simple. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Does the dog sit reliably when there's no distractions present? I can't answer that question because I don't know. But if the answer is, well, the dog sits most of the time, then the answer is no. So we need that sit to be super reliable when there's no distractions. And then, like a lot of my other videos, we need to start adding distractions, adding locations, adding situations where we could work on the sit command. And as you increase distractions and you add locations, you're going to get different levels of response from the dog. And this is where what I call RF comes into play, which is your rate of reinforcement. And what that means is the amount of you know, treats and lures that you're giving the dog to perform under moments of anxiety or stress or whatever the dog is exhibiting or experiencing during the moment of escalation. So what does this mean? It would be ideal if I went on a walk and came across someone so I can illustrate this to you, but we live in the country, so the chances of me running into someone on a walk is pretty slim. So we'll just have to settle for doing it here with Sable, and I'll walk around a little bit. You'll probably lose my head in this shot just because I have the camera stationary, but you'll get the idea. Come. Good girl. So that was just a quick reinforcement. She came to me, sit. So that was, you know, pretty simple stuff, right? Now, if I'm out and about and I need to keep her attention, I'm going to increase 
the rate of the reward, like I mentioned earlier, and it's basically going to be, you know, I have one treat here, I might break it up into little bitsy pieces and keep offering that to make sure that her focus stays on me. Come. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Good job, Mama. Oh, what a good girl. Yes. Good job. Very good. Good girl. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, is we keep offering the treats at a pretty steady pace to keep the dog's attention on us, the handler, as we're sitting there chatting with the other person. And this is why it's important to try and recreate the crime, so to speak, where we get some guinea pigs to help us out so we can actually set up scenarios to work through the situation. Heel. Good girl. Sable likes this exercise, that's for sure. <laughs> Good girl. Good job, Mama. And your rate of reinforcement is basically, literally, the rate at which you're offering your food rewards. That's what we're talking about here again. Food rewards, right? So you would put the dog in a sit, and you would give your, your verbal, physical rewards, just like, you know, I always recommend, and obviously your food rewards as well. And what you need to do is you need to understand how much time generally passes before the dog starts to exhibit the behavior. The only way we do that is with practice, repetition, and opportunity. We need to know generally how much time passes before the dog starts to exhibit. Obviously we're going to be working the dog, you know, doing some obedience and, and recreating this, the crime if you will, right? Uh, you know, we need, to, we need guinea pigs to help us out to, to emulate a real life scenario that causes this dog to react and that's where we start working the dog with the obedience, increase the rate of reinforcement. And this is where knowing about how much time passes before the dog exhibits is crucial because we want to almost like a preemptive strike, if you will, where we want to make sure that we start working the dog after X amount of time has passed, but before the escalation occurs. And sure, there are other methods that we could use, corrections and things like that, but uh, you know, we probably don't need to, as long as the dog is food motivated and is, you know, generally a friendly dog and it just happens to exhibit this anxious behavior from time to time, it's certainly something we could work through without having to resort to any kind of corrective tools or anything like that. Uh, of course, you know, that's, that's certainly a possibility. I don't shy away from that, but, you know, I, I try to do the least invasive method first. That's kind of my go-to. And then I escalate from there if need be. But... In this case, I think food lures is our way to go, not just to improve the obedience reliability, but also to create a positive association with that particular scenario. And what's going to happen is over time and through repetition, the dog is going to start you know, associating this new situation with work and food rewards, right? And, and that's not a bad thing. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. And then after time, we can reduce our rate of reinforcement and we can go to more of an interval reinforcement schedule, you know, where we're not giving the, the food rewards as frequently, some time has passes, things along those lines. And then before long, our hope is, is that the dog just generalizes in that situation where, hey, I'm just sitting because that's what we do. Just ask anyone who's involved in any kind of repetitious activity, whether it's, you know, cerebral and studying or, you know, really absorbing information, or athletes who try to repeat similar physical actions to improve their muscle memory. And then what happens after time, they're just reflexes. And that's really what we're trying to do here. It may sound simplistic, but that's really what we want from the dog. We want this to be a reflex. We want it to be automatic where the dog is choosing to do these things, right? Without having to lure, without having to correct, without having to guide, and that happens through repetition. And we create repetition by seeking opportunity. So this is a good starting point for this particular situation. Cora, I hope it helps. I look forward to hearing back from you and reporting how you're making out. And as always, if you guys have questions surrounding this or any other topic, you can contact me on my social media. Please drop your comments in the description below as well. I'm here to help, I'm here to serve you. So anything you want me to bring up content-wise, uh, certainly hit me up, let me know, and, uh, and I'm game for just about anything. And again, I just want to thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate you checking in. And don't forget, if you like what you see on my channel, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell so you can get notified when uh, new content is uploaded. And uh, I wish you all a wonderful day.